Hello and welcome to Eskimo TV. Hello. I'm talking today to Dr. Thayla Murphy. Dr. Murphy is the clinical lead for pediatric surgery and neurology at St. George's Hospital in London, specializing in understanding testes and incontinence. Hi, Dr. Murphy. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Very good. Dr. Murphy, today's discussion is going to be about dysfunctional voiding, also known as Hinman syndrome. So what does dysfunctional voiding refer to in children? Well, dysfunctional voiding is any situation, to put it in layman's terms, in which your child is voiding an unusual pattern. It is not unusual for children to go through periods in which they void more frequently or less frequently, but this is a prolonged course in which the child is either going to toilet in appropriate times, going to toilet very infrequently, going to toilet much too often during the day, particularly during school or after school hours, or having problems with accidents or rushing to go to the toilet. Um, Hinman syndrome is a slightly different condition which tend to, tends to affect adolescents, particularly young girls, in which they uh, develop abnormal wetting and abnormal voiding patterns that are usually related to other issues going on in the family. But dysfunctional voiding is a very common thing that occurs very frequently with uh, lots of children. What are some of the main causes of dysfunctional voiding, and um, who are who is more at risk? Well, one of the commonest causes, bizarrely enough, is uh, constipation. And one of the medications that that I would use, and most of my colleagues would use, most frequently for children with dysfunctional voiding, is actual medication to treat the constipation. If you can imagine, there's a relatively small amount of space in your pelvis. And if a huge amount of that space is been occupied by poo, uh, your bladder has been impacted by this. And if you're unable to empty your bladder normally or efficiently, you're not going to be able to empty your bladder normally or efficiently. So emptying out that bowel is extremely important. For children with chronic constipation or children, and not even that children go through bouts of constipation, who can quickly fall into dysfunctional voiding patterns. Another very frequent reason for children to develop dysfunctional voiding is uh, bad or poor fluid intake. So what's happening is, is that they don't want to go to the toilet at a particular time because it's not suitable or they don't like the toilet, particularly in school, and hence they don't drink in school. And that will lead to many hours in which they're not drinking or voiding, and that would add an element of dysfunction into their, their relationship between their brain and their bladder. And these all these minor things add up over time, so suddenly the child goes for prolonged periods of time without voiding, and hence the bladder has not, not really learned or has forgotten about the normal relationship between filling and emptying. What are some of the signs and symptoms that uh, may indicate that my child is suffering from dysfunctional voiding? Well, one of, one of the common signs is a rush to go to the toilet. I mean, we're all aware of children who are, are watching video games or playing video games, and suddenly there's a mad rush to go to the toilet uh, because they're distracted. But that can occur in any situation. So they can suddenly be in, in a car journey and need to go and need to go now. So there's a, a degree of what we call it urgency. Also, the children will be going repeatedly over many, many, many times uh, in a short period of time up to every 10 minutes, sometimes every hour. Uh, every, uh, so this element of frequency can impact upon them. You can also see the children with dysfunctional voiding will have um, problems that can have problems at night, so they can have episodes of bedwetting. And a lot of children who have chronic undiagnosed um, uh, daytime wetting, really their main symptoms are ni nighttime wetting. And they just haven't been picked up that the daytimes are very, very dysfunctional. So it's not unusual for children to have frequency, urgency, a degree of accidents or a degree of incontinence both day and night, and also some, um, excuse me, some symptoms, occasionally some urinary tract infections, but that would be relatively rare. What are the possible complications should this go untreated? Well, one of the main complications is that the child develops some long-standing bladder dysfunction. 
And there's nothing worse than seeing patients who've had dysfunctional voiding, which has maybe not been diagnosed or been under treated and are persisting for many, many years. So one of the biggest problems for the child is that they've seen many, many doctors or physicians or uh, health, health consultants who give them a lot of advice but have failed to improve the child. So by the time they reach 15, 16, 17, they've maybe seen 10 people and are still chronically wet. This is a huge issue for the child and for the young adult because they're going to become extremely unmotivated, disappointed, they're going to be uh, restricting what they do, it becomes psychologically quite traumatic for them, and it can impact greatly upon their life, their choices, their fears, their fears for what they can do at the moment, and their options for what they believe they can do for the future are extremely limited in their own mind. So it is very important for these children in the long term that they get dealt with as soon as possible, and to reassure even children who are wet for prolonged periods of time that the vast, vast majority of them can be resolved without uh, major difficulty. Dr. Murphy, just to end off with, uh, what um, sort of treatments are involved in helping children with dysfunctional voiding? Well, dysfunctional voiding is such a broad church, there's a huge amount of subdivisions within that. Uh, some children are very suitable for uh, basically cognitive behavioural therapy, so it's a degree of psychological um, reinforcement to allow the child to take control because some degree of dysfunction avoiding is simply due to the fact that the communication from the child's brain to the spine and the bladder has become disorganised. So it's not as if the child has got into bad habits, which is a phrase which I despair with, but it's that the communication between all parts of the system that are necessary to control the bladder have fallen apart. So it's very important to get that child to understand that filling and emptying the bladder on a regular control basis is very important. To empty out the bowel and treat that constipation, to ensure that they drink the appropriate fluids, and to make sure that there's no issues with um, urinary tract infections or any of the other less common causes of dysfunction that, that have a slightly more surgical or pathological element that they all need to be resolved. Of course, there is this, another group of children that do require medication because the bladder is, for want of a word, too twitchy, and they need some medication to help relax their bladder. Unfortunately, there is only a limited amount of medication available for all bladder pathologies, and there isn't a medication yet that allows us to control or get someone to go to the toilet. So all the medication is really designed to help decrease the stimulation that they make a bladder that's a bit too twitchy or too irritable relax a little bit more. So all these things can, with a combination of, of management of constipation, helping the child to understand what's going on, resolve the situation in the vast majority of patients. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. Thank you so much for talking to me today. No problem.